Hi there, I'm Tim Johnson, Senior Editor at American Woodworker Magazine, and I'm going to talk a little bit about bent lamination, which is a process that allows you to bend wood to create curved shapes. They can be a simple arc, they can be an S-shape, undulating, uh, whatever you want. Now, here's a shape, a curved shape, and you might say, why the heck would you want to go through a process that sounds difficult, bent lamination, when all you really need to do is go to the bandsaw, make a couple cuts, clean it up with sandpaper, and you're done. Well, here's the reason. When you saw this shape, you create what's called short grain, and it's right down there. And short grain is weak, and it's likely to split, especially if the wood is put under any kind of stress. Now, what we've drawn here is the foot for a shaker-style trestle table. Now, when you imagine all of the weight of the table pushing down on the top of this cutout piece, it's going to create stress on this short grain, and it may cause it to fail. A bent lamination solves that problem because you take a number of laminations, which are th thin strips of wood, and you bend them to the shape. And by doing that, you can see that it eliminates the short grain problem because the grain actually flows in an arc. So let's talk a little bit more about the process of bent lamination. You need two things. You need the laminations, the thin strips, and we'll talk about them in a minute, but you also need a form. And the form has to have the same shape as the end shape that you want to get as a result. Now your form has to be thick, thicker than the laminations, and it has to be stout. So I've created the form using three pieces of three-quarter inch MDF, which I glued together into a big rectangle. After that, I wanted to create this arc shape, so I used a router with a trammel style base and simply made a pass with a straight bit on to create the outside edge of the top arc, and then I moved the position of the indexing pin on the trammel to cut the inside arc. And after I'd routed about halfway down, I went to the bandsaw, sawed out the waist, here it is, and then I took these two pieces, flipped them over, inserted a flush trim bit in my router, and cleaned up this area of waste to get two nice surfaces. Now, the, the form for bending can consist of just these two parts alone, and the idea is that you clamp one of them down, you put the laminations in the middle, and then you push this part up to smash them all into this shape. But, because you're gluing them, you're going to get glue over, all over everything. I don't want to get it on my workbench, so I've added underneath this piece of melamine, so the glue won't stick to that. And to help control this piece as it slides in, before I cut it in, into two pieces, I made three passes with the dado set to create these grooves on the bottoms of both pieces. And into those, I'm going to insert these splines, which are just made out of hardboard, and they're going to guide the second part of the lamination as I pull it together. And I'll demonstrate how that's going to work in just a second. Without these guides, this piece could go virtually anywhere, but now you can see that it's somewhat controlled, and as it gets closer and closer, it's controlled until it's going to go straight in. The last thing that I've added are these two strips on the top of this piece that's going to get clamped to the surface. Now these pieces are going to keep this section of the form from twisting up due to clamping pressure, and this is a problem that you can have if you don't find a way to control it. So once I'm under the protection of this piece, I'm not going to move anywhere. So this is going to make it much easier for me to clamp these two pieces together. All right, let's talk about the laminations. <clears throat> Now, as I said, you start out with a board like this, and we're going to joint one face of the board and joint one edge, so it's 90 degrees to the face. 
Now we're going to take this board and run it through the bandsaw using the fence and a resaw blade. And if your bandsaw is set up for resawing, accurately set up and has a good blade in it, you can cut the wood very thin and you can almost go from cutting directly to laminating. The thickness of the laminations that you need to cut depends on a couple of things. The radius of the curve you're going to bend and the type of wood that you're using. Some types of wood are more flexible than others. And so to increase the flexibility of the board, of the lamination, you have to make it thinner. Now, when you resaw the laminations, you've got a jointed edge, and after you've sawn it, you have a sawn edge. To cut the next lamination, you rejoint the surface of the board and then make a second pass. So what you end up with are a series of laminations that have one jointed surface and one sawn surface. And as I said, if you have a resaw that's set up properly for resawing, you can get away with stopping there. But oftentimes you have to clean up the back surface of the board. And the way that you can do that, there are a couple ways. Uh, one of them is to run them through your planer. And when you're milling lumber this thin, that's pretty risky. You're likely to get a lot of failure. So you have to use a support uh, that allows you, that's a thick piece of MDF, kind of like this, that supports this thin strip as it's being sent through the planer underneath the pressure rollers so that they can't cause this piece to flex. This is when you run into problems. One other thing that you should do with these pieces is to flex each one of them to make sure that you don't have a section of wood where there's a fracture, something that will cause it to uh, crack as it's bending. And even though the board looks good, you may find some pieces that have these problems. This board right here, there's a knot. And I don't know what that's going to look like inside the board. So when I saw through the surface, it, there may be something really bad going on down in here, which may cause that particular lamination to fail. So it's not unusual to lose some of the laminations as, you're, as you're, you're cutting them. You may have noticed that I've got a couple lines drawn on the face of this board. Now these are lines that are going to help me reorient the laminations after I've sawn them. So I put them back in the same orientation that they came out of the log. So I haven't flipped them over and have the grain running in opposite directions. Uh, this will just help me get a more uniform bend on the laminations. Another thing that we need to know about the laminations is that they, you have to start out thicker than your end uh, thickness is going to be. And that's because as the laminations get crunched together in this form, they have a tendency to swim around a little bit, so the surface won't be dead flat. So you're going to have to joint and plane these two faces after the piece has been laminated. So you're going to lose a little bit of thickness. So the piece that we were talking about with the big arc shape that we're going to make will be an inch and three quarters thick, so we're starting out with two inch thick material. Now, another thing that, that these little runners do is to raise each lamination off the bottom of, of my form. And that's going to allow the glue to kind of get out. It won't get smashed onto the face. So that gives me a little bit of clearance. And it also serves to raise this lamination up into the center of the jig. So it's it's going to help, it's going to limit the amount of movement that I'm going to get in that piece as I glue it together. Now these laminations, I talked about how you can, you can make them thinner and make them more pliable. And another thing that you can do to make them more pliable is to run a sponge with damp water, or with water on them, so you dampen them. And then let them, they'll look wet, let them dry out, they'll still have a lot of moisture in them, but when you add water it increases the flexibility and there's not a problem with adding water if you're going to use polyurethane glue to glue the pieces together, which is what we're going to use. Because polyurethane glue draws moisture from the air and from the piece to cure. If you're going to use another kind of glue, an epoxy or a different type of resin glue or even a yellow glue, you'll need to let those pieces dry overnight before you glue up, if you dampen them. Well, let's take these pieces over to the form. And these pieces are exactly two and a half inches thick when I press them together, and that's the thickness of the piece that we want. So I'm going to place them in position on the form, and I'm going to do what's called a dry fit, just to make sure that 
everything works. And this is, you know, when you're gluing up a complex uh, assembly, it's always a good idea to do a dry run. So, I'm going to use quick grip clamps for this, which I've discovered are excellent for this type of process. And I'm going to use three of them. And I'll use them in sequence. I'm going to start out, <laughs> I'm getting these guys set up and I really don't need to. I'm going to start out with center one and I'm just going to put some pressure onto my laminations. You can see them start to flex. And now I'm going to apply the other two clamps. And now I'm going to draw the two outside ones. This will loosen the inside clamp. I'm going to go back to the inside clamp, draw it tight. Go back to my outside clamps and I'm watching the laminations bend and I'm checking to make sure that they don't rise up. Here they've raised up a little bit and I'm listening to hear if any of them crack. If they fracture, we're going to have to stop and take them back out. Pulling this one up in the middle is kind of like my safety. And getting to the point now where the laminations are going to move into the curved portion of the jig. Everything's still going well. I'm going to tighten the center one one more time and I'm getting close to the end now. And I really do want to keep the pressure on these outer laminations. I'm going to draw them tight to the curves first. And that kind of automatically draws the center to the curve. I'm looking things over and it looks to me like I've drawn nice and tight. I didn't hear any fractures and what that means is that these laminations and this process is going to work. So my next step is to unclamp these and then start applying glue. Okay, now we're ready to glue these laminations together. Now the first step is to protect your workbench table with wax paper or we're using a roofing paper here. Something so that the glue isn't going to mess up the surface of your workbench. Um, and then I've laid out my laminations individual, individually and sequentially starting from the one that's going to be the bottom and then working all the way to the one that will be just underneath the top. This is the top piece and I'm not going to put glue on that. What I'm going to do is roll glue onto this entire section and then I'm going to stack the pieces. So we'll have glue on one side of the joint. Uh, sometimes some glue manufacturers recommend using glue on both sides of the joint. Uh, we're just going to do it on one side for the sake of this demonstration. The glue I'm going to be using, as I mentioned earlier, is a polyurethane type glue. Now you're probably familiar with Gorilla Glue. Uh, they've made, made their name with polyurethane glue. Uh, but there are many other manufacturers of polyurethane on the market. Um, polyurethane glues have a real advantage over yellow glue in a bent lamination because they're rigid. They don't creep. And a yellow glue over time, because it's a little bit elastic, you can have the laminations move ever so slightly. And so when you run your finger down the edge of the table or of the leg, you'll, you'll see, you'll be able to feel ridges. Maybe it's not a huge deal, but if you're a perfectionist using uh, polyurethane glue, which is more rigid, will give you a uh, slightly better success. Uh, another advantage of polyurethane glue, as I mentioned earlier, is that it actually draws moisture out of the air and out of the wood to help the joint cure. So that allow, gives you the opportunity to dampen your laminations to make them more flexible. Now you should dampen them, uh, let them sit for about an hour so they dry off, so they look like they're dry. There'll still be moisture on the surface. Uh, and, and then proceed to gluing. Now I've put some of my polyurethane glue into a little roller pan and I'm simply going to roll it on all these surfaces. This isn't rocket science. It's kind of tedious as a matter of fact. Just want to get a uniform coat of glue on every lamination.
Okay, now I've got the glue spread on all the laminations, a nice even spreading. One of the advantages of polyurethane glue is that it has a 30 minute open time, which means I've got plenty of time to roll all these pieces out and take a look at them and make sure I've got a nice uniform coat of glue on all of the layers. As you know, yellow glue gives you about five minutes to do that. That would be much, much more difficult. I also mentioned earlier that some manufacturers tell you to put glue on both sides of the lamination. Some say you only need to do it on one side. So if you wanted to put glue on both sides of these laminations, since we start, this is our topmost lamination, the one that we didn't put any glue on, and it's going to go on this piece. So the way I would do both, laminate both sides, is to put glue on the bottom of this piece. So I'm going to do that. I'll put it on the bottom side of this piece. I'm almost there. And then I'm simply going to flip over Flip it on top of this lamination, which is the second one. Now I flip these two back over, and I'm ready to put another coat of glue on this side, and then I'll flip this piece over, and we'll keep going. But as I said, I'm only going to put glue on one side of the laminations. And another thing that this manufacturer recommends is that if your wood is really dry, if the conditions are really dry, or the wood is dry, they recommend just misting the glued surface with a little bit of water. And here you're, you're adding some moisture to help the glue cure. So we've added just a little tiny bit. And now my process for stacking is to start at this back end and just literally stack these pieces. Again, this would take, if I was gluing both sides of these pieces, it would take longer. But again, we've got plenty of open time. You can see how the glue is starting to foam up a little bit. If you're familiar with polyurethane glue, you're familiar with the fact that it foams as it cures. It's one of the downsides of polyurethanes. Uh, it used to be a problem than it is now. Manufacturers have worked really hard to, to reduce the foaming, and it's actually a uh, an advertising point for many of these glues. I've got a nice stack and I'm checking to see all my glue lines and I want to make sure I put this piece on correctly. And now we're ready to move and make sure these are all nice and flat and get them started right ready to move back to the jig. And one thing that I want to make sure to mention is that because of this sticky glue, you want to make sure that you've got all the surfaces coated with wax so that the glue won't stick, so the things won't stick. Because as you know, this is, this is pretty powerful glue. I have no glue on the top of the top piece and no glue on the bottom of the bottom piece. Time to position them in our form. And now we're going to pull out our handy clamps and get ourselves started. I've got the laminations in place and I'm starting to draw them together. And I'm kind of watching these ends to make sure that I go, they stay symmetrical from end to end. So I've got a hammer to help me with that. And again, I used the two outside clamps and then come back with the inside clamp. That's kind of my safety. As soon as I feel the outside clamps release, I go back to them. Okay, we'll draw this one again. You can see that the polyurethane glue has started to foam. I'm going to make sure that I'm staying nice and flat on my runners. Keep those laminations as uniform as I can. So far so good. We're going to clamp from the outside. 
instead of the center because this is the toughest part of the curve to draw close to. And you watch, as I draw in on the outside, we'll draw tight to the center. There we go. One last pull there. I can see that I've drawn nice and tight all the way around. We're done. <laughs>